this is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. You know that? It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Barbie! From director Greta Gerwig is a fantasy comedy based on the iconic doll from Mattel. Margot Robbie plays bad as a runtime of one hour and 54 minutes with an 88 on Rotten Tomatoes. It has the second lowest tomato meter score of the 10 best picture noms. It has an 83 audience score, which is also kind of low, and has the sixth best betting odds at plus 4,000. And it's woke! It's... It's for the libs. Uh, it's not. It, it is nominated for eight Academy Awards: Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor, Ryan Gosling, Best Supporting Actress, America Ferrara, Best Adapted Screenplay, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, two nominations for Best Original Song: I'm Just Ken by Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt, and What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. Uh, this was the most divisive movie of the year. Would you agree? I would agree. And I blame white people. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was a movie that all white people probably had the most annoying discourse of the entire year. Um, and I, I want to say this right off the bat. I don't think that it should have been nominated for best picture, but I did not dislike this movie. I liked this movie quite a bit and I feel very comfortable in how I perceived this movie. And I feel very comfortable in my criticisms of this movie. And at the end of the day, I really liked it, and I thought it was a lot of fun, but it's a fucking comedy, and it's not that important. Okay. Uh, fantastic. It's Pete Blackburn, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, it was a good, not great movie, and it turned into, and I say borderline very lightly. You could tell me if borderline wasn't needed here. It turned into a borderline, or not borderline, political cause for... A lot of people, and I'm not just saying that the white women who came away from it being like, oh, I like white women so much, which was like, all right, uh, cool it. Like Alexandra Ship and Issa Rae got like two lines in this movie. I wasn't crazy about that. Yeah. Uh, or the mostly white men who are like, why they got to shove feminism in my face? <laughs> like, it, if you were upset about any of the messages in this movie, right. you suck. So I, it just, I it wasn't made upset. This, I wasn't upset about the messaging. I was upset about, or I was disappointed by how like surface level it was and how how it lacked uh, subtlety. Do you remember my issue with the the movie? In our, we have a review out there from right after the movie came out. Do you remember my uh, issue with it? No. It was uh, this movie was a white girl with a ukulele, and yes. I wanted this movie to be every girl with a gun. <laughs> I wanted it to have way more teeth and I look like just knowing that it comes from Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach who can make anything so well and knowing how clever and gifted they both are. If this were directed by Joe director, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. They made a trite movie for kids, mm -hmm. but Greta Gerwig made it and I, I'm sorry, I can't ignore the fact that Greta Gerwig fucking rocks. So when something this trite comes from someone this great, I'm left to think they knew what they were doing. Like Greta Gerwig, I'm sure, would tell you, like, oh, like this isn't the most brilliant movie I've ever made. I wanted it to be, though. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I wouldn't say that it was made for kids. Like, I think that's a, it's, it's definitely a movie for adults, but it's for, like, specifically, like, the America Ferrara scene about, like, the big monologue speech scene. The Tumblr post. That's exactly what it is. It's like a Tumblr post. It's for a fucking wine moms who shop at Home Goods and post on Facebook. Like, it's just so fucking surface level. It's, like, very, uh, like, inspirational quote, instagram -y. So, I don't even want to say, like, it's for this type of person or this type of woman it is very live laugh love yes co like cork board yeah thing so that's Marshalls. what i mean when i say like surface level it's just like oh it's been fucking said a million times here's the like thing this. though if it's your first time hearing that message or that speech then great i'm glad that you're hearing it and getting it i think that what made the discourse so upsetting for like women of color and not to speak for women of color, but this is just something that I heard from women of color, which is like a lot of white people were very excited 
to seemingly hear this message for the first time. And it expressed that the difficulties that people face in this world uh, were kind of falling on deaf ears because they weren't experiencing it as much as like black women or Asian women or any woman of color has to eat shit over and over again. So maybe that ruffled feathers, hurt feelings caused eyes to roll that like, all right, you're like a 35 year old person and you really haven't had to have this shit shoved in your face yet. So I wish that some of the discourse more came from people of color and less than and like whitewashed feminism is for sure an issue in America. This also, and not to make this a political cause thing or whatever, like I felt very weird about the fallout of the nominations that Greta Gerwig not being nominated for Best Director or uh, Margot Robbie not being nominated for Best Actress. This is not the type of movie that gets nominated for Best Picture or any of these things. And that America Ferraro was nominated for Best Actress, I thought was a great bone being thrown to this movie. And I mean, it was a ridiculous bone. It was a ridiculous nomination. Yeah. But the fallout of we didn't get the nominations we wanted it was very like we didn't get our person nominated, and that felt really fucking weird to me. But at the same time, it, Margot Robbie was a million times more deserving than America Ferrara for their performances in that movie. Of a type of nom, of like generally, if you're to nominate somebody, but mm, I think like emphatically in how deserving they were like i didn't feel like there was a lot of heavy lifting by america ferrara in that movie oh no no like america ferrara should not have been nominated no. for best supporting actress uh i'll tell you what margot robbie shouldn't have been nominated for best actress though so that, that gets into the kind of like what are we doing here like for the best actress thing watch killers of the flower moon i've got some of my notes and poor things and ask yourself if any other humans should be nominated for best actress. And then when you're done with that, watch anatomy of a fall right. or watch maestro, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And ask yourself, are you still upset? Are you still upset? <laughs> yeah, like you, you could say, upset? I love Margot Robbie in this movie, which f fine. Like Margot Robbie was very good in this movie. Mar and Margot Robbie rocks, but who are you taking it? Like, are you saying, hey, Carrie Mulligan, get back here? And Carrie Mulligan is like the fourth or fifth best actress performance this year. Carrie so, Mulligan is the most underrated the, actress in Hollywood. And then for the uh, best, she won best actress, didn't she? Yeah, well, for um, uh, Promising Young Woman. Uh, well, was it for that? Or, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah, like yeah. she's decorated, but I hear you. Like, we don't talk about her. We don't her talk a lot. about her. Okay. Uh, for, and then for the Bruno. best director thing. People, I don't know if they're like trying to conflate it incorrectly, but I think that they're trying to do the how do you get a best picture nomination and not a best director nomination. At best, they're confusing the Argo situation, which Argo won best picture and did not get a best director nomination, which was confusing. Nobody in the world thinks Barbie is winning best picture. There are 10 Best Picture nominations and five Best Director nominations. So automatically, half the movies, at least half the movies nominated for Best Picture are not going to get nominated for Best Director. Look at the Best Director noms again and tell me where Greta Gerwig slips in there. I don't really see it, but if you do, God bless. I did not think that... Uh, any lack of nominations here were uh, a crime at all. No, and it doesn't and sound like... And shout out Ryan Gosling, who I did not think... Like, I thought that Ryan Gosling was worse in this movie than Margot Robbie was. He got nominated. Not going to come close to winning either. But, like, you got some nominations. I don't know. And I don't think you deserve that many. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I, I disagree, though. I, th I, think, uh, I think Ryan Gosling was fucking awesome in this movie. And so... Uh, strong performances, particularly from Gosling and Robbie in the in the lead roles. Uh, I'm just Ken was awesome in my mind. I love I <laughs> terrible loved it. song. I loved it. Um, I loved it. I loved the the costume and set design. It, everything looked fucking 
amazing. Uh, they did a great job of setting that world. And and I, uh, my last note in terms of like pros, just I give it a lot of credit for how much fun and how much it was willing to make fun and poke fun at itself in terms of like the Mattel stuff um, and just kind of that that world, the Barbie world, like some of the things that they missed on, so making fun of the IP. I, I think that that was in good taste. This is both a positive and a negative. It took so many bites at so many different apples. And on the positive front, like you got parts of the movie that you liked and you got things that you liked. Like I said, I, I found it really weird the lack of Alexandra Ship, the uh, Barbie author, and Issa Rae, the Barbie president. Like I would have liked more there. Didn't get it. And by opening so many doors, you're showing the viewer which ones they're gonna they're going to miss. I just don't have Will Ferrell in this movie. Ah, uh, so like, didn't of, need any of that shit. One of my biggest cons was I hated all the scenes with like Mattel uh, in the boardroom. Uh, the you Will can have Ferrell. it be part of the story without having to show a bunch of dudes sitting around and sucking and being bored. And I, I really do think that those scenes took this movie down a notch. When I say that, like Barbie is just like at the end of the day, Barbie is just like a stupid fucking comedy, and it's not that important. Like, I, I just. I feel like if you have a movie with Will Ferrell being Will Ferrell, just he, that's all he's doing. He's playing the classic Will Ferrell character, and you have like a a dumb scene where the, he, he's chasing Barbie through the halls of the Mattel headquarters, and like they're running into each other in cubicles and stuff like that. You are saying that this movie is stupid and a like a dumb dumb comedy. Uh, the another negative. Just this movie was uh, very messy. Uh, the music, with the exception of Barbie World, Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj, I love that song. It was very short, but whatever. I'll take as much of that song as I can get. Other than that, I thought the music was like actually bad. I said in our, I remember saying in our regular review, they just put the, they should have had the I'm Just Ken scene and song. They shouldn't have had Mark Ronson do it. They should have had somebody who could write like a big 80s power ballad. The song ended up just being lame and not in the cool way that a lot of the Ken stuff was lame. Loved the Bizarro Dudes Rock stuff. That was yep. all great from the Ken thing. And granted, like going into the Barbie movie, and I know that the movie uh, spent a lot of time on this. I was like, I don't fucking care about Ken. I don't want any Ken stuff. Like, don't, don't waste Ryan Gosling on that. They did some okay stuff there. Michael Sarah was uh, all right. Mainly the jokes needed punching up. There were a lot of like half-baked jokes or are you doing this to be stupid on purpose because you think your audience is stupid or is this rushed? A movie that grand should never be rushed. I gave it three out of five on Letterboxd. Uh th Three and a half out of five for me on Letterboxd. Uh, it's, I, I initially was at four. Uh, I've gone down to three and a half. I just think that this movie was a very good comedy that wanted to be a lot more. And I just don't think that it was smart enough or, or executed enough, executed well enough in its approach and its want to be more. Uh, I'll leave saying this. If you love this movie, fuck yeah. Yeah, right. Like, that's another... Like, you are allowed to love this movie, and this is allowed to be your favorite movie of the year. There's just been a bit of, hey, this in sync album should win album of the year. That's a bad example, because those were all songs that were written by Max Martin. But, like, you know what I'm saying of, like, hey, like... It, this dumb shiny thing was my favorite. Therefore, like, I like back in the day, I was so mad when Lady Gaga lost album of the year to arcade fire maybe it's just because i'm an old guy now i'm like i get how the arcade fire album was a better album but like it being your favorite thing does not mean like people are out to get you yeah. by not saying it's the greatest thing in the world if it is your favorite and your 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 the most important movie to you then like fuck yeah you can you can have worse movies or like less cool movies to be your favorite but my initial reaction to that would be like hey 
you could probably benefit from seeing more movies. <laughs> right. Like, or like talk to people. <laughs> right. Like meet people who don't look like you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's Barbie. <laughs>